Hi everybody, my name is Stefan Ultes and I am presenting our work on blending task success and user satisfaction analysis of learned dialogue behavior with multiple rewards. And this is joint work together with Wolfgang Meyer from Mercedes-Benz Research and Development. In this work, we consider reinforcement learning for dialogue interaction, where a dialogue agent interacts with the user or generally speaking with an environment and receives rewards that guide the learning process of the dialogue agent. And in re related work, we can see that this reward has usually been rendered as task success, where the dialogue outcome is compared with the expected, the desired outcome. Another line of work looked at user satisfaction as principal reward component, where not only the outcome of the interaction is in focus, but also how to get there. So asking the question, was the dialogue interaction satisfactory? And most work looked at both of these reward components independently. And we are asking the question, well, there's a benefit of combining those two rewards. And this is especially relevant because even though we know that user satisfaction rewards can lead to policies that achieve similar task success rates, then task success based reward policies for cooperative users. This is not the case for uncooperative users. So we look at the two questions, how to combine user satisfaction and task success rewards and also how to analyze the resulting behavior. For the first question, we apply multi-objective reinforcement learning. And to answer the second question, we propose a new universal behavior analysis method. And this method builds upon multi-objective reinforcement learning. And I will start with explaining a bit what exactly that is. So in contrast to single objective reinforcement learning, where we only have one scholar reward, in multi-objective reinforcement learning, we have multiple rewards represented as a vector of rewards R. However, to use this vector for the reinforcement learning algorithms we know, we need to scalarize this vector to get one final reward value. So a scalarization function is required. And in this case, this is just a linear sum, which also relies on a weight vector to weight the different reward components. And then this scalarized reward can then be used in the state value function within the expectation for the reward component. In this work, we use the multi-objective GP-SARSA algorithm to conduct our experiments. And this multi-objective reinforcement learning is also the basis for the behavior analysis method. So we have one trained multi-objective policy that is parameterized with different weight configurations. In this example, up to M of those. And then we have a set of contexts. So dialogue states usually. And for each of these contexts, we look at all the policies, what action they produce when probed with these contexts. And for each context, we can, can then can compare the resulting system actions and we can either compute um, similarity scores on those or just uh, look at uh, distributions for different weight configurations. So we use this setup to analyze the, the, learn, the behavior the policy has learned when planning task success and user satisfaction. But first have a quick look at user satisfaction, which is rendered as interaction quality Interaction quality is a more objective way of looking at user satisfaction. Uh, more details are in the paper. Um, it builds upon uh, a modular system architecture, as you can see here, where the policy is then the part that is learned through reinforcement learning. And the interaction quality considers information from a system response and the user input, which are combined in an exchange. So at each time step T, you get one exchange. And out of all of these exchanges, uh, parameters are derived on the exchange level, but also considering temporal information on the window level and on the dialogue level, starting from the beginning of the dialogue up to the current time step T. 
And these parameters are then used to build a classification model to estimate the interaction quality. And the extra interaction quality is modeled uh, from five, meaning satisfied, down to one, meaning extremely unsatisfied. And each value re represents the user satisfaction from the beginning of the dialogue up to the current turn. And this is used as supervision signal to train the classification model. And also then this is the range of the estimated interaction quality, which is then directly used to model the reward. And for the multi-objective setup, we consider two different scalarization functions. One is uh, the weighted reward function, as we called it, which is very similar to the linear weighted sum. And we have different components, one for task success, one for interaction quality, and they are weighted based on a weighting factor. And the task success reward component is uh, plus 20 if the dialogue was successful and zero otherwise, which is indicated through this one here. And the interaction quality based reward component is the final estimate of the interaction quality at the end of the dialogue minus one times five, which basically scales the, inter the reward range to the same range as the success range is in, so from zero to 20. And this is aligned with related work. So those numbers have been taken to be uh, compliant with related work. And finally, there's a turn penalty added. So the longer the dialogue, the lower the reward. Then we also propose another reward scalarization function, which we call gated reward, RG, that basically has the same um, weighted situation here with the task success and detection quality reward components. But in addition to that, there's also this uh, gating. So only if this dialogue was successful, both task success and interaction quality are considered to, um, to contribute to the reward. And we applied this in a learning setup with simulated interaction in the CAM restaurants domain using the PyDial dialogue system toolkit. We had 3000 training dialogues and 200 testing dialogues for five different random seats. So uh, in total, there are 1000 testing dialogues and the results are shown here. On the left side, you see the task success rate. On the right side, you see the average interaction quality. So the average of all interaction quality values estimated at the end of the dialogue. And the blue bars indicate success rates, the green bars indicate interaction quality. And here we have different weight configurations. We only show the success weight, but the interaction quality weight is then one minus success weight. So on the left side with the zero success weight, we have only satisfaction component be relevant in the, in the reward function. And on the right side, we only have the success component be relevant in the reward function. And we can see that um, with increasing weight on success, we also get an increase in the, the task success rates we can achieve um, through our learning setup. And similarly, with increasing satisfaction, we also see an increase in the average interaction quality. Um, yeah. Uh, notably, the gated scalarized function achieves throughout all weight configurations a higher interaction quality, average interaction quality, which is uh, mostly attributed to the fact that, the, that the, only the success the successful dialogues are considered with positive rewards. Then we were also interested in what the policies have actually learned. So what are the uh, system actual distributions for these different weight configurations? And this is shown here. Uh, we see the same uh, weight configurations at the bottom, satisfaction only on the left, success only on the right. And the yellow here at the bottom of all those bars indicate inform action. So the, the number of informed system actions for the set of probing dialogue states is more or less equal throughout all weight configurations. So it's not a lot of difference. However, 
there's a huge difference in confirm and request action and we can observe four times the number of confirm actions looking only at satisfaction compared to uh, uh, the number of confirm actions when looking at the success only weight configuration. And since we are applying, a, since we are using a multi-objective reinforcement learning setup, we can be sure that the only difference between this policy that we look at here and this policy is indeed the weight configuration. Um, and there are no other effects like training data or whatever, because it's the same policy, just a different parameterization through the multi-objective reinforcement learning setup. And because of that, we can also do all these intermediate analysis and see that this does actually a smooth transition um, between uh, satisfaction only and success only um, the uh, action distributions. Then the, the, we also applied this behavior analysis method for selecting the optimal blend. So which weight configuration is the, the optimal one? And for this, we did not just look, uh, analyze the resulting system actions or looked at those. We actually computed uh, similarity scores uh, based on a paper that we presented last year at SIGDIAL. There we compare the, the, weight configure, uh, the results of the, each weight configuration with um, satisfaction only or success only. And we see that, well, uh, if you compare uh, satisfaction only with satisfaction only, you get a 100% 100, 100 match. But if you go farther down to the right, you, this gets lower. And here is obviously the opposite. So success with success, you get a match of one. And these matches are computed using uh, the total match rate, which is only true, uh, which results in the one value if the semantic representations are exactly the same, otherwise it's zero. So it really looks at whether though that those match exactly. And based on this, we can see that in the, in the middle, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, we get a range where we have quite similar, um, a, a quite good similarity to satisfaction only and success only policies. So this is where we look for our candidate um, blend basically. And then we also look at the uh, absolute performance measures, task success rate and average and action quality, where we have then those two candidates and based on those values, we uh, would propose the 0 0.6 uh, weighted uh, uh, success weight policy as the best one. So to conclude this talk, I've shown work on planning task success and user satisfaction, where we use a multi-objective reinforcement learning setup that allows combining user satisfaction and task success rewards. And the resulting policies achieve good success rates and user satisfaction. I also presented a way to analyze the learned dialogue behavior with multiple rewards. There, each, each policy is probed with a fixed set of contexts or states. And this comparison that we do in this work was only possible because we used the multi objective setup where we did have only the weights as the only different quantity between different policies that we wanted to compare. You could see that the user satisfaction based rewards result in policies that produce more confirmed system actions and that similarity scoring helps with finding the best blend of multiple rewards. For future work, we also look at human evaluation, whether this setup can be applied to, to learning directly from humans, where we can then hopefully see also that, 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 that this, uh, for, for once this action distribution uh, also holds when humans are interacting with the system, not only a simulated environment. Also, we're looking at different rewards that are not as complementing as satisfaction and success are, maybe uh, towards sentiment and other uh, things like that. Thank you very much for your interest in this work. And uh, I might hear one or the other question later in the question uh, round. Thank you very much. <laughs>